Okay, so here we are in KiCad. Uh, this is a 3D model of the uh, reflow um, system. Uh, so as you can see, as you saw in the video, this is what we've got. But this means I can easily show you things um, uh, before I take uh, the device apart. So if we just hide the enclosure, so and we've got a top plate here, which is where the LEDs are mounted. We'll just hide that as well, temporarily. So we've got the two hot plates and they are suspended on um, st stainless steel bolts um, and they're um, attached to this metal plate um, which it contains the fan. Now when the temperature profile is being run that fan is on low and the reason it's on low is it helps to spread the heat evenly across the plates but it also blows air up and around the plates and keeps the, um, the plastics around cool and I've had this up to 220 degrees without problem. Alright so if we just hide the plates as well. Right um, these are supports for the uh, top plate and these are just uh, 3D printed uh, sort of cable guards that um, keep the cables which run down from the plates which are the um, uh, the heater element um, supply and the thermistor of which there is one per plate and also the LED cables they run down there and that just stops them chaffing on the uh, metal plate. So if we hide that, hide that. Okay we've got two uh, little deflectors here and they just prevent any cables interfering with the fans and then inside we've got uh, two solid state relays now I'm actually using 40 amp ones even though I only need um, well less than uh, two amps um, but I'll come to that shortly <clears throat> and we've got um, the power supply unit which is a 240 volt to 5 volt uh, converter 3 amp I think um, we've got a PCB which has got the ESP32 on it and various connectors for the various cables uh, we've got the IEC connector uh, here is the um, thermal cutout and uh, the solid state relays have got an insulator block on so that uh, no mains is exposed uh, within the device. Okay, we've then got a small PCB which has got the um, encoder with the switch and the LCD display. Right, and the other thing, apart from the main fan which is on all the time while the device is powered up, is a cable guide here. So all the cables which run down uh, the side of the device uh, from the hot plates and the LEDs, they then are guided through this cable guide and are then passed over to the uh, PCB. So that's the internals of the device. So I've um, loaded the enclosure into Prusa Slicer uh, over on 2.6.0 Alpha 4. Um, which enables organic supports, which are absolutely fantastic. As you can see, um, the uh, enclosure only just fits on the bed um, of my Ender 5, but that's the way I designed it. Um, the different colours are different um, layers, so if we um, drag this down, go all the way to the bottom, zoom in, then here we have a hole for a captive nut and there you go, oops, yeah, captive nut, and at that point there it starts to get um, covered over, and uh, so uh, when this is being 3D printed, um, the printer will pause when it's like that, I can put the nut in, and then um, it'll keep on going, and uh, there are various places, um, such as um, for the base, for the feet, um, for the SSRs and for the top plate that need um, captive knots embedding in the printer, which is why we've got all these different coloured layers. Now I'm printing this in um, just standard PLA, it's not high temperature stuff or anything like that, um, and even the top plate that's right next to the um, hot plates is printed in PLA, um, but because I've used the fan and uh, that blows cool air over the um, everything. It keeps the temperature down and I have no problems, as I say, even up to 220 degrees. So looking at the um, um, schematic for the reflow device, 
Um, this is it in KiCad. So over here we've got the um, switched IEC coming in. We've got the thermal cutoff there, which goes off if the temperature reaches 50 degrees. That goes into the uh, AC to DC converter. <coughs> we get five volts out of that. Uh, the fans across there plus a couple of smoothing capacitors, right? And then here we have the uh, ESP32. Um, we're using all of the available pins on this, really. Um, so uh, we've got um, the fan in the centre of the device here being driven by a transistor. Uh, we've got um, up to four thermistors along with their um, associated um, resistor. Um, we've got um, the LED um, harness um, going down to two connectors. Um, these aren't really RGB LEDs; they're just uh, red and orange. What, sorry, red and green ones. Um, we've got the separate PCB, which encloses uh, the encoder and a buzzer, and also a connector for the SSD one three zero six LCD display. And well, that's about it, really. So um, it's fairly simple. I've just wired it up on a quarter, a couple of quarter breadboard um, uh, PCBs, and I'll show you that shortly. So we'll now have a look inside the device, and the bottom is held on by uh, the feet with um, three millimeter Allen bolts, which will now magically disappear. So we can then tip over the device over onto its side and drop the bottom plate down. Okay, so there's the circuit board with the ESP32 on it. Here is the cable which goes to the um, display and encoder board, so I'll just connect that. Here we have um, the connector for the thermistors. There's two of those at the moment. Disconnect those. And as you can see, there is space for four thermistors on there. This connector is for the um, solid state relays. And at the moment, I'm only using, utilizing two, but as you can see, there is um, space for two more. So I'll just disconnect from that. Okay, so up here, we've got the connectors for the two sets of um, LEDs, reds and greens and earths for each wiring loom. So I'll disconnect those. Okay. Then we've got the two fans. Disconnect those. We've got the um, five volt input. So I'll just disconnect that. And then we've got the USB cable, which goes up and goes to the USB plate over here. So looking at the board, um, as I say, so we've got space for four thermistors, four solid state relays, uh, the um, display, these are the, um, the resistors um, for the thermistors, there's the ESP32, and those are the current limiting resistors for the uh, LEDs, and that's the, uh, that's the transistor that drives the middle fan, and those are the connectors for the fans. So looking inside, uh, we've got the two uh, solid state relays there. There's the fan that's in the middle of the device. And uh, you can just see one of the uh, black printed um, insulators that goes over the main side of the um, solid state relay. And there's the IEC. Now all the cables are appropriately insulated. They've all got ferrules on them. Um, we've got uh, there's the earth pin, sorry, the earth bolt on the base plate that's also connected to the mid plate that's also connected to the top plates. Uh, you can't see the uh, thermal cutout, but it's in there. So there we are. A little bit of a rat's nest, but um, I need to uh, shorten the cables for the thermistors and then that'll tidy things up quite a bit. Here we are in Visual Studio Code, uh, which is the um, environment I use to develop the software um, for the Reflow. Uh, we're on Reflow version 1.04 at the moment. <clears throat> the libraries I'm using are the Adafruit GFX library and the SSD1306 to drive the display. 
I'm using the UHG2 library, which is uh, I find very flexible for um, drawing on mono displays, such as the one we're using. Um, in terms of main things that um, configure how the how reflow oven is configured, we've got um, two plates defined. We've got seven different temperature profiles. Each temperature profile can have up to ten um, slots, which include a, a temperature and a time. Um, we've got two LEDs per plate and if we actually look at the um, how things are configured um, we've then got this structure here which defines a temperature profile so it's got a name um, it's got a definition of which PID profile is used to um, uh, execute the profile it's got a number of temperature slots um, you can define which cooling sl which slot um, in the profile you want to start the cooling at. Um, you can define the profile minimum and maximum temperatures on the display and you can also define it so if the temperature gets below a certain level then the run is deemed to be finished even if the time period is still running. And we've then got an array of slots, um, one for each um, point where the temperature needs to change which is a time from the start of the whole profile run um, to the point where the temperature needs to be attained and then the reflow oven works it all out. So here we've got a definition of um, those seven temperature profiles. So there we got uh, after five seconds go to 45 degrees, after 45 seconds go to, sorry, after 40 seconds go to 45 degrees, so that's just a flat um, temperature profile. Then after 130 go for 90 and then we've got after 580 go down to 24, so that's the final. Um, run. Um, we've also got a temperature profile for the constant run and these zeros here are um, updated by the software when you define a profile and say how long you want it to run and what temperature you want it to run at. So in terms of the actual plates um, this is a structure that uh, represents them. It's got a name, it's which channel, uh, sorry which pin we are going to drive the solid state relay on we use PWM to drive the solid state relays and we need to define a channel. We need the pin that the thermistor's on. We can then define up to two red LEDs and two green LEDs. And then we've got um, for each plate what the set point is at the moment in time, what the current temperature is, what the value, the raw value from the thermistor is. Um, we've got the current value that is being sent to the solid state relay. And then we've got um, the last um, timestamp when we actually did the PID calculation and then we've got the error previously and uh, on the previous time scan when we're doing our PID control and um, we also need to record um, as part of the PID where P is proportional, I is integral and D is derivative, we need to keep track of the last error, um, the integral error and that's what that does. So here are the definitions for the front plate and the back plate if you were wanting to expand the unit to four plates, you would just add two more of those. I don't know, front left, front right, back left, back right, um, and do it that way. We've then got a structure which represents a PID profile. So here we've got P only, where we've got some proportional proportional gain of 24. And then for the PI and D, we've got proportional gain of 15. We don't actually have an integral on this because I was experimenting. And a uh, derivative gain of 100. And um, we uh, can also limit the maximum integral uh, gain that is, a, sorry, the maximum integral um, calculation that is applied to the output. And we can also limit what the maximum output that the solid state relays at PWM is driven to. So at the moment, I've got both of them limited to only 1500 um, out of the 4096 possible PWM steps per second. Right, I won't go into the rest of the code because it's about 1500 lines long. Um, there's still some stuff to do with it. Um, I want to add thermal runaway protection. Um, I've got a problem at the moment where um, after a run is finished it won't go do another run, but that's just a case of rebooting it, but I'll fix that. Um, the test mode's a bit limited, so I'm going to fix, uh, fix that up a bit. Um, and, uh, well there's a spelling error, let's fix that. And I'm going to improve the PID um, parameters for the profiles and the constant modes. Right, there's a quick look at the code. Um, 
I'll, uh, I'll maybe do another video um, once I've done some more fixes. Alright, see you. Bye for now.